dual cycle learning. It's only take a few minutes. So the dual cycle comes about because, in truth, the ignition process is neither isochoric nor isobaric, but is somewhere in between. Right? And so the idea is that we could match our real life cycle more accurately if we kind of modeled, well, some of it's going to be isochoric and some's going to be isobaric. Um, in reality, maybe there's a curve or maybe there's a, a spike and up. But if we just uh, take these two, um, then we can get better agreement between our analysis and our real cycle. So it's not an auto, it's not a diesel. It's a, it's a mathematical construction of the both of them to try and get closer to an internal combustion engine. So a portion is isochoric and the rest is isobaric. So that's, I guess, a way of talking about it. There's five processes. So a thermal cycle doesn't have, thermodynamic cycle doesn't have to be four processes. This one's five. Uh, it's not unusual to get to eight or nine uh, in, in the ranking, which is where we're going in a few weeks' time. So you compress, you add heat isochorically, you add heat isobarically, then you expand. And just to keep the numbering the same as the auto and the diesel, rather than introduce another number and then the rest of the numbers are out of order, they've just put in a, a letter so that um, stroke four, you know, uh, process four and five, state point four and one are the same. That's what it looks like on the PV and TS charts. The analysis is very similar to, that's the analysis for heat addition in the auto cycle and that's the analysis for heat and work in the diesel cycle. So I've just taken those terms from the two cycles and mashed them together into this cycle. Make sure you feel familiar with and comfortable and confident with those. Uh, we then need another term to be added and that term is, well, how much of the heat is isochoric and how much is isobaric, right? So we need a cutoff ratio because a cutoff ratio tells us what the volume ratio is that's the isobaric part, but now we need to know what the heat was. And so we define that as the pressure increase that occurs in the isochoric sense. So that's alpha. And lo and behold, and uh, you know, I'm not going through the math, but we then get, again, a thermal efficiency based only on compression ratio R, cutoff ratio RC, and uh, I forget what the term alpha is called. Sorry, I didn't write it down. The term alpha. So just using those as variables, we can calculate the um, thermal efficiency. It's somewhere between the auto cycle and the diesel cycle. Question, high values of alpha or low values of alpha? So adding most of the heat here or adding most of the heat there will give you higher efficiency. What do you think? What does your gut tell you? That's right. Adding most of the heat in this, if all of the heat was added on the vertical, then it would be most like the auto cycle, which has a higher thermal efficiency. If all of the heat was added across the horizontal, it would be most like the diesel cycle, which has a lower thermal efficiency for the same compression ratio. Okay? So a higher value of alpha will give you a higher thermal efficiency. Um, that would prove to be true if you graph that. We weren't going to analyze one, but I just wanted to introduce the idea that a thermal cycle doesn't have to have four processes and that the cycles we learn and think about can be modified to better suit our real world situations. <coughs>